Thank you. We asked our viewers and Facebook followers to let us know what part of the COVID-19 crisis is most concerning to them. This response came from Donna Whitney, who said hers is about, quote, the debt we are compounding. And she continues, quote, we need to be looking ahead in, in balance, looking at this current crisis. And she adds, anyone buried in debt, how long it takes to get out of, if ever, how would you control spending while directly responding to the coronavirus pandemic? To Mr. Negron? Sure, that's a great question. And thank you, Donna, for the question. Um, I wasn't in favor of this massive bailout package um, originally um, because of the type of monies that was inside that package. To me, it would be a very simple litmus test. If, in fact, this money was going to be used for somebody or something that was directly affected by the COVID-19, that I'd be willing to listen to it and see if that was part of the package. It was clear that there were a lot of things in that package that were not directly affected by COVID-19. And I think that that was a way um, for the Democratic Party or the socialist-leaning left party um, to get things into a budget that they couldn't get through the normal process. Look, I'm a, I'm a fiscal hawk. I understand that there's these issues. We cannot keep on spending the way we are. And I think this, this first round, it did help some people, but I believe there was some bloated spending in there that never should have gotten to the street in the first place. Thank you. And Ms. Blankenbecker. Oh, yes. And I am absolutely a fiscally responsible person. And, and so, it, you know, when you look at the packages, the CARES Act and the, and the packages that came through, there, there was so much pork and so much bloat in there that, um, you know, wasn't going directly to uh, translating directly to COVID relief. And so, uh, you know, when, when Nancy Pelosi threw in $25 million to rehab the Kennedy Center so she could have a party there. Um, this is really ridiculous and we've got to be better better stewards of our taxpayer dollars when it comes to that. Um, you know, we still have a trillion dollars left in the last care pa CARES package and so that absolutely um, needs to be spent before we would even consider uh, another package which I would not be in favor for at this point. The nation is healing and like I said, um, unlike my opponent, I am a very fiscally responsible person and uh, so I, uh, you know, I wouldn't support a, a blo bloat like that. You were invoked there, Mr. Negron, but let's let's explore here. How would you be different on, on this COVID-19 response from Ms. Blankenbecker? Well, certainly, you know, her statement that, um, you know, she would spend the trillion that's left. I mean, that's indicative. Um, I would look at not spending that trillion um, if there was no need for it. So, you know, it's clear that, you know, that's if it's there, she wants to spend it. That's that's that's, that's the huge difference between uh, my opponent and myself. Your response, Ms. Blankenbecker? Uh, well, I, I don't think I clearly said I'd spend it. I said there's a trillion left. Why are we looking at another package when we still have a trillion left on the table? Uh, certainly, if there was an opportunity to not spend it, that I would be su absolutely supporting that. Uh, so, In terms of how you would differ from Mr. Negron on the topic, though, how would you handle this pandemic differently than he would in Congress? Well, you know, I mean, it's you, you can see by Mr. Negron's campaign budget that he's $300,000 in debt. And so he clearly is, is not as fiscally conservative as he lets, leads us to believe. Mr. Negron, you get 15 seconds to respond. Sure, Adam. Well, you know, this is normally we get attacks from Democrats in the in a primary. And now we're getting attacked from our own from our own party. You know, this is this, this is this is this is the issue, right? That money is money that I lent to campaign. Um, that's my personal resources. She wants people to believe that I owe that money to anybody else. The person I owe that money to is myself. But she's been doing this for the last three months. It's not getting any traction, and it's just a sign of a desperate campaign. Uh, well, since I've been invoked, do I get an opportunity you to can respond? respond? Quick response here, and then we'll Absolutely. move on. Absolutely. Yes. Well, and first of all, these are not attacks. These are the facts. And whether you borrow the money from yourself, or you borrow the money from the bank, or you borrow the money from China, we simply cannot have a person who believes that that borrowing money is the way to finance anything. And, you know, I do not want a congressperson going to Congress for me that is not going to be fiscally responsible and is going to be worrying about borrowing money and spending beyond our means. I am, a, I am the candidate who has been about staying within Becker. those fiscal constraints. And so, um, you know, that, that just goes against my grain.